Today I have a very cool lens for review. It's the 7 Artisans 4mm 2.8 fisheye lens. This lens was sent to me by 7 Artisans for review. This is for the Canon EFM mount for the uh, Canon EOS M cameras like the M50 which I have right here and the M6 Mark II. So this mount is kind of a, a dead mount. I think uh, they're gonna discontinue the EFM mount but it's, I think it's still worth to get this lens uh, if you have one of these cameras because it's really fun. The lens costs about $150. The box is quite nice. So here we have the 7 Artisans logo. Here we have the picture of the lens, some of the basic characteristics. So it's for crop sensor cameras, four millimeter focal length, 2.8 maximum aperture, uh, has really close focusing distance of uh, 7.5 centimeters, field of view of 225 uh, degrees. It's a fully manual lens. So uh, manual focusing, manual aperture, no communications of any data to the camera. On the back, we have some basic information about seven artisans, uh, nothing special. On this side, we have the lens element diagram and the barcode here. So let's open it up. First, you slide off the jacket and then we have the box. The box is pretty good quality. Here we have the instruction manual and a little bit of foam. Here's the lens in the plastic wrap. And on the bottom, there is more foam. So general packaging, very good for a lens uh, this cheap, nothing to complain about. It should survive shipping without any issues. This is a circular fisheye lens. They're always a little bit tricky with the lens caps because you can't just use a, any normal lens cap. It has this type of a dome lens cap that uh, goes over the lens itself. The quality of the lens cap is very good. It's uh, all metal. The build quality of the lens is all metal. It has two rings. One is a focusing ring, so it goes from 0.0 eight, five meters. So it's 8.5 centimeters, minimum focal distance. And that's a focusing distance from the subject to the film focal plane. So you're really close to the subject with the front element, front element. And then it goes to infinity. Then we have an aperture ring. So it goes from 2.8. It's a clickless aperture. So there are no indents. I wish it was clicked for photography, but it's fine. I'm not going to change the aperture too much. So it goes from 2.8 to four, uh, then 5.6, eight, and then straight to 16. It's smooth, so you can set it to any aperture you want. Um, there, as I said, there is no exit data, so you're not gonna have recorded which aperture you have set. One thing that's interesting, the bottom of the aperture has this knob, which uh, in other lenses I've seen on focusing knobs, which kind of makes sense. Like on Leica cameras, you have a focusing knob. There it makes sense. But in my opinion, it makes absolutely no sense for aperture. Um, I wish they didn't put it in. I would even cut it off if I could. Uh, it's really annoying. I'll explain why later when it's mounted on the camera, why I really hate this feature. Uh, especially for fisheye, I'm not planning to change the aperture all that much. When I'm indoors, I'll probably have it at 2.8. When I'm outdoors, I'm gonna have it like 4 or 5.6. I'm not really gonna change it. There's not much uh, depth of field playing. Really, you just change them based on how much light you have. So I'll try to keep it between four and eight maybe, and then indoors, if you don't have too much light and you don't wanna crank out the ISO too much, you just set it to 2.8, but you don't really change the aperture all the time like you would do on a portrait lens. So I think this is really weird. I saw another video from uh, Simon Utak's channel. He has a great video on this lens uh, showing really nice uh, sample images. Uh, and he really liked this uh, stick or knob. I absolutely hate it. I really don't like it. So um, yeah, it just shows you how different people are. So the landscape is really nice quality and it slides decently well, but it's not on super duper firm. So I wish there was slightly better design. I wish it was uh, sliding over the lens a little bit deeper because it doesn't take that much force to take out the lens cap. So I haven't really had an issue for the lens cap falling off, but you know, it just, you know, with two little fingers, it slides off pretty easily. So I think if you're like walking around with the lens and you know, you generally want to have the lens cap on because otherwise the lens is super exposed. If you have the lens cap on, and you're carrying this camera uh, on your shoulder, I could see pretty easily that something's gonna rock and it's just gonna come off like that. So um, I'll show you, I'll compare this lens uh, to the Mica 6.5 millimeter fisheye lens. Um, there the lens cap design is a little bit better. And then on this end, we just have a EOS M mount. Uh, it shows you that the rear element is really tiny. I guess it's normal for fisheye lenses. It's really nice metal mount. The build quality of the lens is really, really, really nice. Uh, fisheye lens are always a little bit tricky because you know the front element is a bulbous piece of glass. So it's always gonna be a little tricky on how to protect it, but the lens is tiny. It's pretty hefty. It's not like a piece of plastic. Everything is metal. Uh, so as far as build quality, no complaints. I think it looks great. 
I, I would just remove this uh, little knob. Or it would be nice if it was uh, twistable. So I tried to twist it off, but you can't like unscrew it. It's, uh, it's kind of welded on. One reason why I think this lens is really awesome is because it brings something that your iPhone can do. I'm making uh, more videos about the new iPhone. This is the iPhone 14 Pro. And I think for most people, the iPhone will uh, replace most of cameras, especially like lower end cameras like the Canon M50 and like the, some cameras that would be common for the EOS M system. Phone has a really good wide angle, it has a 48 megapixels and it's pretty decent telephoto. So it replaces the kid zoom. So the kid zoom goes from 24 to about 75 millimeters. So this is, in my opinion, almost completely replaced by the phone. You can get uh, fisheye adapters for phones, but generally they're gonna degrade the quality quite a bit. They're not gonna give you the full 180 view. And uh, if you put a lens like this on a real camera, you're gonna get really, really good quality. So that's why lenses like these and like other specialty lenses like macros are really fun and really important for photography now, because if we don't have special lenses like these, these cameras are gonna be completely replaced. Everybody's gonna have a phone and like photography is gonna kind of die down. You're just gonna have uh, iPhone photography and then like a pro grade photography where people use full frame cameras that cost $2,000 and medium format cameras. I have those as well but I really would like to, um, for uh, uh, cameras in the thousand dollar price range to survive. So uh, lenses like these, in my opinion, are super important for the viability of the industry um, altogether. So it's really fun to play with these. It's great to get a new um, perspective uh, on the world. And uh, I think if people have a little bit of extra funds, I really would suggest uh, for everybody to pick up uh, a circular or normal fish eyes like this one. So this is the seven hours since the cost about 150. A similar one is the Laova four millimeter that costs about 200. And here's the Mikey, which I'll compare it to. Uh, that one costs about $125. So it's pretty tight. There's nothing loose there. It, uh, it's a really good fit. So I haven't actually used this on the Canon M50 at all. As I said, I only use it for the, on the M6 Mark II because of the higher megapixel. This grip actually seems uh, less deep than on the Canon M6 Mark II. So this should not show up in any of your pictures. Uh, I tried to look for this and uh, I don't see the, the grip from the Canon uh, M6 Mark II showing up in any of my, uh, any of my pictures. So shooting with this lens is uh, really fun. It's pretty challenging uh, because uh, you end up having your head or your feet or uh, you know your grip and your, your fingers in the shot quite a bit. So in general, I try to go two different ways. Either I really deliberately try not to have any of my things showing in the picture so in order to do so you can't hold the camera like this if you hold the camera like this your fingers are going to show up in the picture uh, you have to really care for the tripod and your uh, feet and so i, I kind of step back and i kind of point out the lens uh, the camera and the lens forward so in order to not get any of your uh, fingers uh, in the picture the way i shoot is that kind of set everything up i focus i uh, adjust my aperture i mean this is usually a slow a slow shooting i it's, uh, it's kind of deliberate, so I, it's not that hard. Uh, and uh, what I do then, once I have everything set up, I kind of hold the camera with my left hand like this underneath to make sure nothing is showing. And obviously I don't have the strap. And then I push the button like this. So I don't hold the camera like that. I push the button from the top like that. And it's not super stable. You're not gonna have a whole lot of uh, motion blur from a fisheye because it's such a, a wide angle view. So yeah, so I hold it uh, with my left hand like this, and then I shoot like this. Another option is to use a timer. So you can do like a two second timer. I saw other people doing it. So you can set up a two second timer, kind of set everything up, pop it from the back screen, and then well, two seconds later, it'll take the picture. Another option, which you don't have on the uh, M50, is to use a wired uh, release. So on the M6 Mark II, I can just plug in a wired release and then kind of trigger it from the back or use a wireless trigger. So generally I try not to include any of myself in the image. Uh, and then on the opposite side, if I feel like I can't really avoid it, then I try to be more deliberate and include actually um, uh, parts of myself to kind of show um, the behind of the scenes look. So that's how I like to do it. So I don't like to have just like a little bit of fingers in, like this would annoy me if I just have like a little bit of fingers on the side. Uh, either I try to keep it clean or I try uh, to kind of put my head in it or my feet deliberately kind of point the lens down a little bit and we'll show you um, show you the feet. Here's the size of the lens on the camera. It's really small. It's one of the smallest lenses. It's not as small as the 22 millimeter pancake. So one thing you just have to look out for is to kind of protect the element. 
it is a 150 dollar lens so if you kind of bang it up i guess you know it will just show battle scars i don't think it's going to show up on images too much when i was taking a picture of a vending machine uh there's a glass and it was trying to focus and I definitely touched the uh, uh, vending machine glass with the front element a couple of times uh, when I was taking the image and it seems fine Let me explain why I don't like uh, this knob knob thing here so much So when you uh, select the aperture somewhere in the middle So here we have 5.6 which is actually a really common aperture they use outside Now this knob is kind of sticking out to the bottom So I was taking an image from like a wall and I was planning to just rest the camera on the wall and because of this sticking out, it's not it's not going to rest flat. You know, it kind of points it out. Other than that, the, the aperture uh, is nice, very nicely dampened. The focusing ring also works really well, but you have to be really careful with it. So at the short end, it focuses really closely. I'll show some examples of how closely you can go. And then you don't have to go very far to go from uh, minimum focusing distance to infinity. But one thing you have to really watch out for is that it goes past infinity. So here's infinity and when you go outside and you set it to infinity, it is perfectly sharp. You can go way past the infinity and this will make it very obviously blurry. I think they made this for like infrared photography uh, where you have to kind of focus past the infinity to get the sharp images, but you do have to be careful. Uh, for general shooting, I would actually prefer if it's just a hard stop at infinity, but if other people use it for um, infrared photography, I understand why they have this feature but you have to be careful about it. So when you're shooting outside and you kind of want to shoot at infinity, which for a lot of landscapes, it's really easy to just kind of set it close to infinity, set it to like 5.6 or four, and uh, you're good. You can just snap away, you know, just worry about the ISO and just uh, worry about the composition, but you don't have to do much. If you're doing like close-up work, you have to go closer and then you actually do have to focus. And the uh, magnification on an LCD is absolutely critical because it's really hard to judge focus on the fisheye images because everything is, so small, you don't get like um, obvious magnification of features like text or eyes and things like that. But overall, usability of this lens is uh, is great. Uh, no complaints. Now I'll compare quickly to the Mike uh, 6.5 millimeter, which is right here. The reason why I like the 4 millimeter 7 Artisan so much more is that on the Canon crop size cameras, the sensor covers the entire circle. The problem with this 6.5 is that it was designed for the other crop cameras like Fuji and. Um, Sony where the crop uh, factor is 1.5 and on those cameras you get the full circle but on the Canon EOS M cameras you don't get the full circle but with the 7R sense you get the full circle which I really really like so for me this is much better lens than this uh, Mica 6.5 millimeter uh, I don't have the Laova 4 millimeter so I can't really compare it to that I think there is a video I'll put in the, the description uh, below that compares the 7R sense to the Laova four millimeter as far as sharpness, but so you can check that out and see how they're different. But the seven hours since is also cheaper. And based on my uh, testing, this one is very sharp. I'll show a bunch of images. I'll go into Photoshop and look at these closely. So um, we can talk about it. Here's the Mica 6.5 millimeter. So the front element is not as bulbous as on the seven hours since. So I'll show some images on how much wider the seven hours since is. Uh, so it's, it's wider, like the diameter of it's wider but it's, it doesn't stick out as much. So this lens is not as, as wide. It has a wider focusing ring. The aperture ring is a little bit loose on this one, but it could be because I got this used. Uh, so let's pop it on the camera. Here it looks how it looks on the from the rear side. So let's pop it on the M50 to show you how it looks here. So you have aperture ring close to the body. One of the advantages of the Mica 6.5 millimeter that it is one stop brighter. So it's a 2.8 aperture. So it has a also declicked aperture ring. So it goes from 2.8 to 4, 8, and 22. So when I was doing testing, I kind of put it in between to get a 2.8 and 5.6. Generally, these rings are pretty loose on my copy. But as I said, I got this used uh, super cheap. So these go brand new for $125. So this only focuses to uh, 0.2 meters. So it's uh, 20 uh, centimeters. The 7 hours is 8.5 centimeters. So it's a huge difference. You can get much, much closer. You can get like a, some really crazy effects with the 7 hours. So from that perspective, it is much uh, better than the Mica. I'll go into Photoshop to show the differences in quality and how wide they are. But as far as uh, for me, I highly prefer the 7 Artisans uh, as opposed to the Mica or any other uh, lenses uh, that are uh, the same lens, just different brands. Uh, the Mica is uh, one stop brighter, but to me, that's not that uh, important since for fisheye, it's just depth of field really is not an issue. Kind of everything is in focus anyway. 
and extra one stop of brightness usually is not a problem for me it has to be pretty dark inside to make a difference and the mic i got it about a year ago and the fact that it doesn't cover the full circle on the canon aps size cameras it just always irritated me and irked me every time i looked at the images and that's why i didn't really use it as much also what's cool about the 7r sense is that around the image the circle image it kind of shows some fringing and i think it also adds uh, uh, quite a bit to the uh, flare of the image one thing to note is that the, i do like the landscape on the mic more it slides over this part right here which is really short but uh, in general the fit of the landscape is tighter so it's pretty it's on pretty tight like i'm i can't i can't really like hold the camera but this is not going off as easy as on the 7 hours so from that perspective this is a slightly better design uh i think for people who have uh fuji cameras and sony cameras i think the choice uh, would be much more difficult uh, because on the fuji and sony cameras the 6.5 millimeter fish eyes do cover the whole circle it's not as clear cut so there are you know some people might prefer the mic especially if you can buy it uh, super cheap somewhere i do uh, prefer the 7 rsense lens more so i did a quick image quality test between the 7 rsense uh, 4 millimeter and the mic 6.5 millimeter i took uh, sample images so here we have a 7 rsense at 2.8 4 5.6 8 and then i did the mic at f2 f2.8 f4 f5.6 and f8 if you look at the 7 rsns 4 millimeter and the mic 6.5 millimeter side by side you can see the pretty big difference between how wide they are the 7 rsns 4 millimeter is significantly wider so i'm uh, standing in the same spot i use the tripod so you can see it in the shot here on the 7 rsns 4 millimeter you can see the tripod on my feet really easily here on the mic uh, it's just a little bit so it's a lot easier to um, not have that in the shot compared to the 7 rsns so the 7 RSNs is significantly wider. You can see in the car here, there is the whole car is here. On the mic, it's just a little bit of it. And it's also on this side, this whole part of the building is here. And also on the top, you can see a lot more sky compared to the mic lens. My main issue with the mic fisheye is that it cuts off the picture. You don't get the full circle on the Canon crop sensor cameras. On the Fuji, you get the full circle, I think. But on the Canon, it chops off from the bottom and the top and it really irks me so for me the 7 r sense is clearly superior lens let's look at the sharpness between these two so if we zoom to 100 percent um it's obviously a little bit bigger on the less wide mic but they're both very sharp really i don't have no complaints as far as uh, picture quality the sharpness is really nice uh, this text is really sharp on both of the images even at uh, 2.0 uh, the mic is sharp i don't really have any complaints uh, also chromatic aberration is not bad uh, I don't see any obvious chromatic aberration here. On the mic, it's a little bit more pronounced, uh, but this is a 2.0, so let's look at them side by side at 2.8, so it's a more apples to apples comparison. So let's zoom in. But both images are very nice and sharp. I have really no complaints as far as the optical quality of either of the lens. Um, I mean, the fisheye shots are kind of um, funky anyway, so nobody's really pixel peeping here. Uh, if you want to do some like uh, virtual tours, you might care more about this. But for my purposes, where I use it for general photography, it's not that big of a deal. On the 7 RSNs, I don't really see any chromatic aberration. I don't have any profile enabled because there are no profiles for this lens in Lightroom. Um, here, it gets a little bit softer on the mic in the corner. Uh, and I see a little bit more chromatic aberration. I would say the 7 RSNs is sharper outside of the image center. It could be just the depth of field. So look at the F8 images or F5.6 but it's not a huge deal. The mic is plenty sharp for me. The main issue I have with the mic is that um, it doesn't give me the full circle. But other than that, I, I didn't really have an issue with it. So let's look at F4 right here. In the center, still plenty sharp. The seven artisans, really, I don't see a whole lot of difference between them. Uh, the mic, is it sharper? Uh, this is still, I think this is a little bit sharper. Let's look at them side by side at 5.6. In the center, obviously, it's still sharp and in the corner no issues the mic does seem to sharpen up a lot more with the increasing aperture value so if you are shooting with the mic you want to use like 5.6 maybe f8 but on the 7 rsn it doesn't seem to be too much of a difference let me look at the 7 rsn compared to itself at different apertures so here is 7 rsn 2.8 versus 7 rsn at 4 so side by side center i really can't see a difference uh on my screen really irrelevant and in the corner, 
Yeah, I would say even in the corners, I don't really see a whole lot of difference. Maybe these trees are a little bit sharper. Um, so it, did, it is worth stopping down for a higher depth of field, especially if you're using the macro function. Uh, maybe there's less chromatic aberration here at this edge here, but I'm, it's not really a big difference. So for me, I'm not really going to worry about stopping down for sharpness, more for um, depth of field. And just generally, if I miss focus a little bit, I guess with the high aperture like f4 and f5.6, I'll have had less of an issue. So let's look at uh, 2.8 versus 5.6. What's interesting is that I have more of this like halo around the picture. I really like it. It kind of gives me a cool look. Some people might hate it. The mica doesn't do that uh, nearly as much. So if you uh, don't like this um, kind of uh, reflections in the internal barrel, you might prefer the mica over the seven arsons. So let's zoom in. Uh, I don't see any difference. So once we get to higher f-stop numbers, we might be able to see diffraction, but I don't really see a issue with that um, yet at this aperture in the corner. Even this text right here, like Securitas, I wouldn't say I see any difference here. Let's zoom like even more um, right here. I mean, so this is 2.8, it's 5.6. I would say they're just as legible on either one. Maybe this is a little more legible. So it says security job, I guess, dot ch, but it's really relevant. Uh, let's look at the center at like super high magnification. So this is like 400x. Yeah, I don't see a difference. So this is like magnification, like 300x at between the 2.8 and 5.6. There's really no difference in sharpness, which is great news. So what that means is that with the seven R sense, you just you can shoot between 2.8, 5.6, no problem. The sharpness will be the same. You just get more depth of field, but uh, that really only matters if you're shooting uh, really close to the lens. So if you're shooting like landscapes, like in this case, 2.8, 5.6 is pretty much equivalent. So maybe the best thing is to set it to like four or 5.6, just in case you don't get the focus thing exactly right. So in this particular case, I had it on the tripod. I focus with the magnification really tightly, so it was focused perfectly. But if you're kind of just walking around, shooting, you might want to have the aperture value a little bit higher so you don't miss focus by accident. Now let's look at uh, 2.8 versus uh, f8. For some strange reason, this uh, at f8 image has a completely different uh, white balance. Uh, so I just wanted to point it out. Also a lot more of this uh, internal reflection. If we zoom in, oh, this is at uh, 300x. So if it's at 100x, Still no difference. So at f8, I don't really see any diffraction yet either. So great performance from the 7 RSNs for sure. So now let's have a quick look at the macro capabilities of this lens. So here's a very scary picture of myself. Um, so I pretty much have the lens as close to my eyes as I could manage it. So I took this picture by myself, so it's a little bit difficult. But you can see that even at the really close focus distances, this lens is extremely sharp. I didn't write down the information on what the aperture this was. I think I did probably like f4, f5.6. Uh, I didn't have like crazy amount of light, but you can see like this crazy veins in my eye. It's super sharp. And this can actually give you like really awesome images. I'll show you another one uh, from like nature. Here's another macro picture from nature. Overall, the picture is a little bit too busy. So uh, I, I won't say it's a great because uh, the background is too busy, but you can see how beautifully blurred it is. And the close up, it's super sharp. So these are some like uh, plants here. It's kind of hard to focus with this lens when it's this close because even when you magnify things, they're still kind of small. But the detail here is uh, really extraordinary. It can really be used like a micro lens, but you have to watch out for your background. So the ba the backgrounds here are nicely defocused. Uh, I would say the bokeh quality is quite good. It's just there's so much of the background and it's bound to be distracting at some point. So you can see even my feet are here. So here we have like a super close up of my seed. And then even my feet are still in the picture. So they're blurry, but even like my pants are in the picture. So it's not an easy lens to use, but it can definitely give you some really cool pictures if you get lucky or if you know, really know what you're doing. So in summary, I would highly recommend the Seven Artisans uh, Circular Fisheye. I think these fisheye lenses are a lot of fun. Um, uh, it's really, they're really not that expensive. And I think we are really fortunate that live in this era of uh, cheap lenses that come uh, out of China. Uh, when I was uh, kind of uh, starting out with photography in the early 2000s, 
Fish eyes were pretty hard to come by. The only fish eye that was available for the Canon cameras was the, was the Canon uh, 15 millimeter. I think Sigma had some fish eye lenses, but they're also quite expensive. And the Canon 15 millimeter, I think cost about $500 back then, which was a lot more than $500 now. And uh, circular fish eyes, I don't, I'm not even aware of uh, any circular fish eyes that were available until the Canon uh, 8 to 15 millimeter came out. That was an L lens and that cost over $1,000. So now, you can just go out, grab yourselves a, a cheap uh, Canon EOS M camera. You can get this probably for $200 or even less or any other uh, APC size um, uh, camera. So you can get like a cheap Sony or a cheap Fuji and you can get yourself a circle of fisheye for $150 and you have something that's really unique and really fun. I'll probably do another video where I'm gonna use this for sports like uh, skiing. The skiing season here in Switzerland is gonna start really soon. So it'll be really fun uh, to see how it performs on the slopes. One thing that I really like, uh, this combo reminds me of the Lomo fisheye um, setup. About 15 years ago, one of my friends had the Lomo fisheye uh, film camera I and I really liked the, the images that came out of it. They were very, very different, kind of funky. Not super high quality as far as uh, from the te technical side, but they uh, were really fun at parties and it gave you a very different look. So now you can kind of have the same look. It's digital, you don't have to waste film and you can have a, a lot of fun with this setup. So overall, highly recommended. Uh, $150 is not that much, especially if you live in the Western world. It's essentially cost of one nice dinner out. Also, you can buy it, you can use it for half a year, and if this is not really a cup of tea, you can probably sell it for $100. And so for $50, you can essentially get like a long-term uh, rental on this lens uh, and have some fun with it, kind of expand your portfolio and uh, see if circular fish is for you or not. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.